I think the major difference between technology companies and e-commerce companies is uh, technology companies primarily try to put a lot more focus into investing tech into technologies of tomorrow. Uh, e-commerce companies potentially do that on a lower scale than technology companies. But Another episode of Engineering Archkal, and today we have with us a very interesting guest, uh, who is a software engineer at Mintra. Hi, Salman. Thank you for having me here. You graduated um, with the CS Engineering degree from NIT in Karnataka. Tell us about you know your experience at NIT and maybe some unique experience to your particular college. Uh, obviously, when you uh, you know go to uh, places like NIT, uh, the experiences shape you to be the person that you are. And uh, I mean, I, I obviously had several ex- uh, several uh, learnings throughout my four years over there. And uh, even when I'm, uh, you know, sort of now an alumni, I do try to contribute my bit over there. I think uh, with when it comes to unique experiences, uh, for me, it's always been uh, you know the kind of people that I meet over there and the kind of connections that I form. The major USP which uh, a lot of folks do try to sell our college is our beach, I guess. So we do have a private beach over there, and uh, I think that is something that usually attracts a lot of people. So Mintra is known to be a great place to work. I think by the great place to work rankings and indeed. Um, Tell us about three things in a company's work culture that young millennials should actually keep an eye out for. One is flexibility to work. I think in at least in today's scenario, that's something which is very important. I think one of the reasons why it was easy for us to transfer to this home work from home scenario uh, was the fact that we always had these flexible timings and could take uh, work from home. You know, by just putting out a, out a message in the morning saying, "Okay, okay today I am working from home." Uh, I think the second uh, thing that I would uh, typically recommend is uh, uh, try to find out what is the kind of tech that people are working uh, at the place you are looking for. So, especially at Mintra, you know, there's a, a lot of exciting new tech that we are working with. Typically, th- that sort of drives your own development and learnings. Uh, so, for me, it's been quite a learning journey over the past one year. Uh, you know, where uh, once I uh, had that campus to corporate shift. I think that's something that's very important. And thirdly, I think as a young engineer, uh, I would always recommend try to look out for the kind of mentorships that you would get at the places that you're looking to work at. Because at the stage of our career, uh, you know, once you're uh, very early in your career, I think it's very important to understand that uh, you at this stage really need to be mentored and guided on what are things to do. So I mean, let's drive straight into what exactly your role is at Mintra and what you do on a day-to-day basis. Maybe the kind of tools that you use, the kind of skills uh, that you needed for your particular role. Typically, I work with backend development, and uh, what uh, tends to happen is uh, uh, I majorly work on this uh, uh, technology called Golang. There is this concept of something called as a gateway, and uh, we are. The gateway team at Mintra, which typic, which uh, on a nominal basis deals with uh, the kind of uh, functionalities that go into the Mintra application, and uh, sort of tying them down uh, with the mobile apps uh, that are there. So uh, for us, on a day-to-day basis, uh, we uh, primarily work with either tooling. Uh, so we try to create different tools which uh, teams across Mintra can use. And uh, we work with the main gateway project, which is uh, our core implementation. If you are a third year or a final year student, it's more important to sort of understand and grab concepts. And uh, because the thing with technologies is these keep changing. So, for example, uh, you know, a, a few years back uh, there was this explosion of this technology called Ruby on Rails. Then something of the sort of Node.js came in, and now you know GoLang is sort of going ahead. A um, few years down the line, you know, there might be something else. But what has not changed is the core fundamental concepts. Where you know, once you have, let's say, this concept of a microservice architecture, which a lot of e-commerce companies use these days, uh, so uh, that has still stuck on. And uh, uh, I think, as a third-year or final-year student, 
uh, what I would typically recommend is you know pick up one technology but try to implement it in the form of projects, in the form of internships. There are a lot of CS graduates who probably would want to work in more tech oriented companies like Facebook and Google and there would be others who would get into you know e-commerce giants like Amazon and Flipkart and others. So taking a particular role um, of let's say you know front-end or back-end development is there a sort of distinction to what you do um, from tech companies versus e-commerce giants? Is it more like technology, innovation and technology kind of takes a back seat uh, in e-commerce or is it quite the opposite? I think the major difference between technology companies and e-commerce companies is uh, technology companies primarily try to put a lot more focus into investing te- into technologies of tomorrow. Uh, e-commerce companies potentially do that on a lower scale than technology companies. But other than that, I think the major life cycles uh, that you undergo uh, through with a front-end engineer or a back-end engineer potentially remain the same. Uh, you know, you have a product manager who gives you uh, potential product tasks that you work with. And, uh, you know, there are product tasks, uh, there are uh, customer feedbacks that you take in. So, I think that cycle potentially remains the same, the software development life cycle as we call it. Uh, what changes is potentially the company's investment uh, into core technology. So, for example, companies like Facebook, Google, uh, you know, uh, the recent trend has been these huge companies investing a huge amount in open source, which is something that you might not see uh, from e uh, I mean, that scale of investment is not something that you see. So, I think that scale of in- investment is the differentiator. And again, then there are obviously, uh, you know, they have teams which just wor- work on those, uh, work on innovating those technologies. So, I think that is. Uh, I would say the uh, core differentiator between the two. Uh, during your college time, you were also part of GSOC, Google Summer of Code. Uh, you know, many students use GSOC as more like giving themselves a foot in the door for landing a good um, interview to a, a great company. Um, are there any particular, um, you know, is there any particular advice that you have for people trying for GSOC? And probably some things that you think they do wrong initially. Uh, one of the few mistakes that a lot of people do try to make uh, is uh, uh, you know sort of take GSOC as this competition that is there, which it is definitely not. Uh, what we need to understand from GSOC and the idea behind GSOC is uh, it is your entry to uh, contributing to open source and uh, in the process uh, uh, being part of a much wider community and a much wider network. Uh, I think for me typically uh, what GSOC has allowed me to do has is uh, reach people who you know I would uh, I would normally not have the opportunity to reach and uh, uh, gain that knowledge from them. What I would uh, recommend is try to look at uh, open source as not just a two-month internship or for example for that matter Google Summer of Code not just as a two-month internship but as a long-term opportunity that you will have which keeps incrementally adding to your resume and your uh, you know, your uh, level of skills. So you did a lot of summer internships as well. So if you had to create like a, you know, like a hypothetical roadmap of how somebody in as a CS engineer should um, spend their summer months all throughout the three summer months that we get, uh, what would you, you know, advise people to do and what is it that you did and why did you do what you did? So uh, at the end of your second year, uh, there are typically two career paths which a lot of people take. One is, uh, you know, go to uh, IIT or IIC and go for a research internship, which is not something which I did. Uh, and the second one is apply to a startup, uh, you know, uh, preferably a startup with less than 20 people or 30 people and get a hang of things and try to work with as many things as possible. So, which is something which I did. So, uh, this particular startup was majorly aimed at the rural uh, India market where uh, you know they made people uh, basically their idea was to make people aware of various schemes, the government schemes that are there. So I worked on uh, right mm-hmm. from Android to developing a management information system for them. In your third year summer, I think uh, a lot of uh, folks do have on campus slash off campus where they apply for. So if you're planning to go for a corporate uh, or if you're planning to do an internship in the industry, uh, definitely do look out for a corporate because uh, that will give you the question of a PPO uh, you know that particular place might offer your replacement offer or things of that sort and uh, you will also understand how the corporate setup in, in, in its entirety works and uh, let's say if you are going for research try to apply to all these uh, foreign research programs try to understand how research is done abroad 
uh, which is uh, from mm-hmm. what I've talked to a lot of people is quite different from what we do here back in India. I see. I'm sure like the viewers would have a lot to take back from this. Thank you so much, Salman. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.